the best boxing guy with the best MMA guy, bare knuckle, boxing guy will win. In one sense, MMA fighters do have a small advantage because the gloves that we wear for an MMA fight are not that much bigger than having a bare fist. MMA, you're worried about um, kicks, submissions, elbows, knees. They don't really have that high, tight, reactive, defensive drill. You know, they have their hands out. Um, all sorts of things that boxers would just love to pick apart. Art of it, Polly fought. Polly's a straight boxer and Artem's known an as an fighter. MMA fighter. Artem beat Polly. Paige started training when she was 16. She's had amateur boxing matches. Paige ain't done nothing with her hands before. Even at UFC, her kicks was her most dangerous attack. You know, straight hands, I haven't seen anything that impressed me. I haven't seen anything in her hands that impressed me at all. I don't think for bare knuckle she has any weaknesses. She has a good chin. She, she's not scary. I don't think she's that skilled yet in hand-to-hand -hand combat that she can compete with us. The hardest thing for me is not throwing elbows because like even on the bag now when you're in that close range you just come off with an elbow or yeah. like you push out with an elbow it's like the short range elbow stuff that we've been working for so long yeah that's what not accidentally too. throwing it because yeah. like even though i've broken my arm like three times and i broke it once throwing an elbow i still throw elbows even yeah. though i don't want to yeah yeah i think the clinch stuff Throwing elbows or like being clinched and throwing a knee clinch, or something. Not, not like, or yeah. like, yeah, because you can clinch in this. Yeah. Like, I normally clinch to set up my knees. That's what it's for. Yeah. But that's probably not allowed. <laughs> it's definitely different than, than MMA. I feel like it's the same in the sense that you're, at the end of the day, it's to fight. And that's how MMA is. At the end of the day, you're going out there and you're fighting. But I feel like this is more, it's more raw. It's more barbaric it's more it's like that down to earth all we're doing is fighting and it just seems fun to just go out there and you know almost be carefree and just fight somebody i think one of the things that really made Paige successful and good is like the use of her kicks she's got a good like upright stance but that isn't necessarily conducive in bare knuckle with her style she's a kickboxer she likes to kick she likes to knee she likes to elbow that's going to be a challenge the training is what's gonna guide you into it. Honestly, the hardest trip, part of the transition for me is just not being able to kick. I, I, my entire career, I have a head kick I feel like knockout. Even I, from I, right here, from right here to today, stance is so much. Yeah, I, you've already changed so much. Kind of itching to kick somebody again, but other than that, I, I really, I don't miss truly, wrestling. Like, I think so, so too, because I was watching my video of me sparring today. A lot of fun and yeah. Oh, that's me. It's a funny little my picture. Movement, yeah. my striking. I kind of knew that I would have to change my striking style. It's just finding that fit where I feel comfortable bringing my fighting style from MMA over. It's different. It's different than an MMA fight live. The difference is there's no lot, like, there's no slow times in, yeah. in bare knuckle. And then just the sound. The sound different. of it. Yeah, when, when you hit, like, bare knuckle on bare skin. What would stop me from throwing kicks is, for one, I don't throw a ton of kicks anyways in my fights. But wearing shoes, I think, would connect to me, like, okay, yeah. I got shoes on, and I think that's what will happen for you, too. Like, no, yeah. I don't know. Tiago said he almost threw a kick yeah. in there. With Tiago Alves being my training partner, who he was the first person I knew personally to transition over. He had nothing but amazing things to say about it. How much fun he had in his fight and how you can't wait for the next one. He had an amazing fight and, and it's exciting. There's this element where there's no, not a single second in bare knuckle fighting where there's like a lag time. Oh, I'm the main event. Oh, nice. I feel like I perform better under pressure when there's like a smaller crowd and I feel like I have less to fight for. I want like all the lights to be on me and like a big deal. Her strength is she's really tough. Like when people ask me about, uh, are you worried about, you know, bare knuckle boxing? That 
without a doubt is the least of my worries for her. I don't think she's afraid to, I know she's, I know I'm more afraid of fighting than she is. Finally, yeah. I'm just really excited to finally fight. It's, of course, it's nice. I, I, the the more I train, the better I'll get yeah. and stuff like that. But it's like you just want to fight. That's yeah. that's what we do. Paige Van Zant's closest support comes from her husband and fellow professional fighter Austin Vanderford. Theirs is a romance that fittingly began in the gym. We had both moved to Portland, Oregon, like right around the same time and coincidentally, and uh, we both had the same strength and conditioning coach. Of course, immediately when he walked in, I was extremely interested in him. I thought he was very cute and successful. I saw that his like big cauliflower ears and immediately I knew that means he was a very good wrestler. I'd always leave like 45 minutes early so I could get there before her practice because she practiced before me. I'd get there a little early so I could like see her at the at the end, you know. I actually believe that I asked him on the first date. She she felt like she was the one who was really pursuing me, which I didn't really like get the feeling at first, but you know, she always makes fun that she's the one who who was pursuing me. Eventually, he realized that I was interested in him. I think more than anything, I was just kind of in disbelief, you know. At the time, I had just gotten into fighting and I think I was like one and oh as a professional and you know she was such a big deal and the funny thing is my mom really knew way more about her than I did because my mom's a big Dancing with the Stars fan. When I called my mom up like hey remember that girl from Dancing with the Stars she flipped out. Once we realized that we both liked each other it was it was like game over. Like most marriages theirs has come with joys, pains, and a learning period. I can get frustrated pretty easily. And honestly, I do I do have a temper. She's a little impatient on things and she kind of jumps the gun. And I think all that is due to like stress and feeling like she needs to be the, the problem solver. I think sometimes I want him to be more of just an ear to talk to. And he tries to be the voice of reason. He tries to reason with me and explain to me like why I could actually, I am wrong instead of just listening to me. Yeah, I just want to vent. <laughs> While Van Zant and Vanderford learned to navigate the early years of marriage in South Florida, in Bedford, Virginia, Britton Hart maneuvers through life as a single mother. Oh, uh, you think mommy's a good cook? Uh -huh. Really? Oh, what does mommy cook? That's good. You really like my eggs, yes. I that's why I cook them. The biggest thing is being, you know, making sure that my kids think that I'm doing the right thing, and that um, that I'm a good mom. And sometimes that's hard to feel like, you know, when you're gone a lot. She questions a lot about her dedication to the sport, how it affects her as a mother. And if you got a fight coming up, and it might be a birthday party, and we might be going away on camp, you know, you got to do a video chat for your daughter for a birthday. You know, it's some things you give up. You miss a lot of stuff. All right, be careful because it's hot. You know, I do think that it is hard. It takes you away from your family. It takes you away from a lot, you know, a lot of things. There's some days I wake up and I can't walk. I'm so stiff or my back hurts or, you know, I, like I literally can't move or I'm exhausted. Those, I mean, definitely are the, the cons of it, like the, taking it so serious and, and making it your life. And I'm like, Brett, I understand that you all can do so much, but one thing about combat is sport. Dedication is everything. There you go. Your legs start to burn, look at them. I would take the feeling sore and waking up with aches any day. You know, it doesn't bother me as much as being, you know, depressed or lost in the world. Hold your ground. Damn it, baby. Ha, ha. That's tight. There you go. You only live once, and if this is the dream you're chasing, there's certain things you may have to give up. And it's hard for a woman. Men can, ah, oh, yeah, kids home with their mom, oh, I can go away and train. But a mother, a single mother, who love her kids, it battles her, it, it, she's battling with it. I've had the conversations where I've broke down crying before, and you know, I talked to my, dropped my son off, and I kind of just lost it because of, like, the way that 
you know, his family and dad treats me over boxing and fighting. And I was just, you know, like, do I need, like, what do I need to do to be a better mom? Do I need to quit? Like, if I quit boxing, would I be a better mom? Would I, I would spend more time with you and I'd be here. I wouldn't be traveling. I wouldn't be gone doing a boxing seminar. Like, I would be around you guys all the time. Like, is that what I need to do? And my seven-year-old, you know, she stopped me and she was like, no, mom, you love boxing. And we know you love us. You're a great mom. People have really come down on her about um, her children, telling her, um, you need to get, you know, you need to stop the fighting. You know, you're never going to get anywhere with it. Go get a nine to five job. People are mean about it and, you know, say that it, it, it might not be the greatest influence to a, to a child, which is part of the reason why I fight and why I want to be the best. Because if I'm just average or, you know, lose, then it's like, oh, I told you so. This is, you know, this got you nowhere. You could have been this, this and that. And you gave up time with your kids just to go and get a couple black eyes and a broken nose. So I try to take it so serious to where I can be like, look, I went and did this and I get to come back with a belt or be a champion or, or be something that my kids can be proud of. She's going after her dream. She's explained to me this is her dream and I've, I've accepted that and I believe her 100%. Uh, so now it's just a matter of her winning this fight. I feel confident that Paige is gonna be the one who comes out on top. I just know that Paige has got another thing coming for her. Because Britain's going to win. <laughs>